Hi, I'm Dan Herbert, course developer and instructor at Point Blank Music School. And in the first of this three-part series, we're going to focus on loading and playing back samples within Max for Live. We cover many elements of sampling and sound design in our courses in London, Los Angeles and online. So to find out more, head over to www.pointblanklondon.com. In our previous Max for Live introductory series, we covered the key fundamentals of programming in Max for Live and created a simple synth. If you've never really programmed anything in Max for Live before, then I strongly suggest you check out parts 1 to 3 before watching these videos. There's many ways to work with samples in Max for Live, and we're going to cover the basic principles and some of the objects that you can use, but this is just touching the surface of what is possible within Max for Live. So let's get started by loading a default Max instrument and drop that onto a MIDI track. And now I'm just going to click on the edit button here and it will load up Max. Here we go. And let's just expand this out a bit to give us a bit more space. So the first thing we need to consider is how to load up audio into Max for Live. I'm going to start by creating three objects. So I'm going to hit button in and then type in buffer and then add a tilde. That's that kind of wavy line after it. I'm going to create another new object, so hit N and then type in Groove, Tilde. And then finally, I'm going to add a live drop, so N, live, dot, drop. Okay, so I've got three objects here. Now, the crucial part here is the buffer and groove. So the buffer object allocates a small chunk of memory to loading an audio file, and we need to name that memory. So let's type in a space and type in sound one as an argument and then we also need to do the same to groove so groove will basically look into the buffer and those two will now be linked so the simplest way to load up a sound is to create a message box so I'm going to type in M and we can either type in read or replace I'm going to choose replace Okay, now all this information about what messages you should connect up can be found in the help file. So if you control click, for example, on buffer tilde, it'll open up a help file. And this explains about what the object does and what messages it also accepts. I'm just going to close that down. So to load up an audio file, I just click on the replace button. It'll open with the load dialog box. And let's just call up this beat here. And now if I double click on buffer, you can see there's a waveform within it, which is that actual sound. Okay. Now to make this process simpler and also to enable Ableton to store the location of this audio file, we're going to use the live.drop object. So when you drag and drop a file onto this object, it will actually output the path from its left outlet. Now if we were to connect that directly into the buffer, it wouldn't understand it because it only understands certain messages like replace or read. So actually what we need to send into the buffer is a message which says replace and then the actual path name. Okay. So what we can do is set up what's known as a variable. So I'm going to type in replace space dollar one. So dollar one basically means whatever message comes in will be swapped for where it says dollar one. Okay. So if I connect this up, into there. Now I'm also going to create another message box so we can see exactly what message is coming out. So it's kind of quite useful when building patches and for troubleshooting. I'm going to put one over here as well. Okay. So let's lock the patch by holding down command key and click in the gray space. And in fact it's probably easier if I just close this for now. Let's save this. M4L sampling. And let's quickly find a file. Drop this onto the drop file. And you can now see in this message box, it's given the actual path name. It's slightly cut off. And here, after the replace message, it's saying replace and then the path. Okay. So that is now loaded up into the buffer. And if I double click, you can now see it's been loaded up. The reason I use replace instead of read is replace will automatically set the length of the buffer to match the length of the sound file. So that's probably the easiest way using the live.drop object to load up files into Max for Live. And the great thing is when you store a preset or save your project, it will remember where the file was located next time you open. 
So to get sound out of this patch, what we'll need to do is we'll need to connect up the groove tilde. So the buffer is where we load sounds into or audio files into and the groove tilde object is what's actually going to play them back. I'm just going to do something really quickly and that is just going to connect the output from the groove into the plug out. We could have gone through a fader, I'm just going to do that for now. Okay, It's just a mono output we've got from this groove tilde object at the moment. So this is the left out of the plugin and this is the right. And then to play back the sample we need to add a couple of additional objects. One is called sig tilde and that will go into the left inlet and I'm actually going to add an argument with one and then we also need a message and I'm going to type in zero and this will basically tell the groove where to play from within the buffer. So this sig tilde object is going to control the playback pitch or playback speed. I'm going to click on open sidebar and let's go down and find the max for live objects and I'm going to drag across the live.num box and that's how you could also have inputted the live.drop simply by dragging across rather than just typing in the object name and I'm going to connect that in. We want to make this a float because at the moment it's not a decimal place so I'm just going to select it, command I and then in the inspector over here come down here and change the unit style to float and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add the option to loop. So I'm going to create a new message and it's going to be called loop and just loop one. I can connect that in there and then when we press that, that will actually enable the loop. So same as before, I'm just going to close it. it makes it easier to load in the samples for now. Drag. I don't do that again. Drag this sample onto it and we press this message and it basically tells the groove to start playing from zero milliseconds, which is the beginning of the file. And as you can hear it stops, if I now press loop one, that enables loop mode. And now if I set this to two, Or... Okay, it will to 0.5, be half speed, 0.25. Good. And for now, if I put that to zero, it turns it off. So we've now got sound out of our sampling patch. In the following video, we'll look at enabling loop on and off and look at triggering this using our MIDI keyboard.